Good afternoon. Please rise and join in singing our opening hymn, found in your missalette, number 302, Gather Us In. I want to thank the young lady that carried the cross. It seems one of two things either happens. There's only guys in church, or and I've seen it, I'll say to a family, would one of you carry the cross? And the young woman always says, their brother, you do it. And really, there's no reason why young ladies can't carry the cross just like the guys, so I thank you back there for carrying the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread that came down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the source of nourishment for your holy people. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Yours is the way to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Jesus Christ, O 
something to start off with. We welcome Father Walter, who is a Marist father, and he's here today to speak on behalf of the Marist missions. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament has left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. word. 
tribute to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Sorry. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf, the word of the Lord. It, I guess so. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarrel among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. As Father Ken said at the beginning, my name is Father Walter. I'm from Massachusetts, um, Methuen, Mass, north of Boston. Uh, place of chowder. Uh, anyway, um, I've been 
many parishes, I've served in many parishes, and I was pastor in five. So I've been around the block. This is my 60th year as a priest. So, and I'm still going strong. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to thank your bishop for allowing me to speak and your pastor, Father Joe, to speak to me, to speak to you on behalf of the Maris Foreign Missions. Our story began on July 23rd, 1816 when 12 young people, priests and brothers, went to a very popular shrine in uh, France, in Lyons, France, north of Paris. It's a very popular shrine, something like, you know, the Lords, Our Lady Lords, Our Lady of Guadalupe. Uh, and even to this day, people go there seeking guidance, seeking help, opening their hearts to the Lord. And that's what they did. They went there that day because they wanted to found a new society called the Society of Mary. You've heard of the Society of Jesus, I'm sure, but you haven't heard of the Society of Mary. Well, I represent Society of Mary. And 20 years later, in 1836, we were given uh, authorization on behalf, of, uh, on, on condition that we would go and take the missions in the South Pacific called Oceania. It was a musical a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago, entitled South Pacific by Rogers and Hammerstein. And of course, it's pictured very romantic. Well, it's, it wasn't at all romantic when they went there in 1836. They left on December 23rd, 1836, and it took them 11 months. There were no jet planes in those days. 11 months it was a difficult voyage. Anyway, they went there because they, they were full of zeal and anticipation of giving the truth to these people. They never heard of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They heard of, they worship God of the moon, God of the sun, you know, the pagan gods, and they fear them. And along come the missionaries, and they give them the truth of God who is love, who cares for them. So this was a tremendous message that they gave. And at the outset, they were, their hearts were filled with uh, the Spirit of God because they saw in these people God's presence and love, that God cares for them as he cares for all of you, all of us. Among the group that went, that first group, was Peter Chanel. He was given the island of Wallace, the islands of Wallace and Fortuna, and he did wonders to the people. He worked tirelessly among them for five years. But the chief, was disturbed by all of this, by Peter Chanel's acceptance, the way the people accepted him, and he was loved by him, and they loved him too. He was disturbed. So what he did is on April 28, 1841, he got a few of his men to apprehend Peter Chanel and put him to death. So he was martyred. And that was a terrible blow to the mission, especially since they had just begun evangelizing these people. But you probably heard this saying, and it's been true throughout the whole history of Christianity. The blood of martyrs is the seed of Christians. And it was true 
in this case, because a few years later, the whole island of Fortuna was converted to Christianity. And I'm sure Peter Chanel, or he's saint, by the way, Saint Peter Chanel, he was, he was canonized in 1954. But I'm sure he kept in his, in his consciousness the words of Jesus Christ that he gave to his apostles the night before at the Last Supper, the night before he was apprehended, taken prisoner, and made to suffer and cruci be crucified. He said, love one another as I love you. No one has such a great love who gives his life for his friends. And that's precisely what Peter Chanel did. Our missionaries, all missionaries, they go. They, they go to serve the people. They offer themselves completely. They give of themselves. I might point out that this first group that went to the missions, they never returned home. They left everything, their, their homeland, and they, they were there for the people. There are hundreds of islands, of course, in the South Pacific, but there's mainly nine islands that we minister to. Fiji, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, Bougainville, New Caledonia, Samoa, uh, the, the uh, Solomon Islands, Tonga, and Wallace and Fatuno. And what they do mainly is they go to uh, the parishes, they serve in parishes, bush stations, also in um, schools, seminaries, catechetical, catechetical centers, and what they do is they seek to educate the people, make them aware of their dignity and worth. And they seek to establish a native clergy so that they undertake the leadership uh, and help the people to be aware of who they are, that they are God's people and God loves them. Because if the God of Abraham and Moses and Jacob and Isaac is a God of all nations, of all colors. And so it is that uh, our missionaries are willing to sacrifice themselves, make people aware, the natives, the people there, that they are made as we all are, into the image and likeness of God, and that God loves them and wants them to be saved. So they open their hearts to God's love. Besides uh, the area of South Pacific, we also go, we also have gone uh, to South America, Peru and Brazil, as well as in Africa, in um, Cameroons, Senegal, and Burundi. And also in Thailand, in the Philippines. So those are all the areas that the missionaries go. And to this day, they leave their mark by making aware, making the people aware that they too are called, as we are all called, to be missionaries, to be to bring God's truth and love to all the people that we meet. Today, you know, we are reminded in this liturgy, in this celebration, of the tremendous gift that we have been given. For instance, somebody might say, what is, your, what is the most precious gift you have ever received? And sometimes we think it's something material, but it's not. It's something eternal a gift that comes from God. 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus gives us himself in the Eucharist, in the body and blood of Christ. That is what we are celebrating today. In the first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy, one of the old, uh, one, of the, one of the books of the Pentateuch, in that reading, the author points out to the people that they were given this manna so that they would be sustained on their journey. And they were given water from the rock. So the Lord cared for them as he cares for us so that they could continue on their journey to the promised land. And in today's gospel, beautiful gospel, Jesus is the bread of life. And anyone who takes of this bread will live forever. That is quite a promise. So we are filled with hope because of these words. Jesus insisted that he who eats my body and drinks my blood has life, and I will be with them, and they will be with me. So there is that relationship that is so deep and so meaningful for all of us to be sustained on our journey of life. So I want to thank you for allowing me to speak to you this afternoon, and thank you also uh, in advance for your generosity towards the Marist missions. Thank you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made. And for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day. of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord God has satisfied our hunger from feeding our forebearers in the desert to sending his living bread from heaven. Therefore we offer our needs to God trusting that our hunger will be satisfied. For the whole church that our participation in the Eucharist may strengthen our unity and our desire to build the human community. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world's refugees who yearn to belong to a welcoming community and for all people separated from their loved ones, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel unworthy of receiving the body and blood of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer for parents, catechists, pastors, and all who are responsible for teaching our children the meaning of the Eucharist, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For families struggling with childcare and time to be together during these summer months, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all in our midst who are suffering, fearful, or discouraged, especially the sick and the dying, and for those who have died, Mark Durand, Marie Whitham, and Alan Eicher, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And let's pause and add our own attentions in silence. And for these we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of infinite generosity, we cry to you in our hunger, and you feed us with living bread. We cry to you now in our need, trusting in your lavish kindness. May the body and the blood of your Son that we receive here today nourish us and inspire us to give of ourselves to others. Hear this in all our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. our risen Lord. Amen. And just a reminder, today's second collection is for the support of the Marist Missions.
pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ. For he is the true and the eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The mystery of faith. Profess your resurrection until the 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary Mother of God with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be called heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Would you greet those around you with some greeting to peace?
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May God bless you, Father, Son, and The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace.